Hello everybody, it's Rachel here at Crafty Hands Crafts. Today I'm showing you how to make false CD envelopes because, well, I like the look of them but I don't have any in my stash. To start with, you will need a piece of paper which measures 6 inches by about 11 and a half inches high. The first thing you need to do is to score some lines. You need to score at half an inch from the left hand side and at half an inch from the right hand side. I am using the scoring attachment on my paper trimmer. Then turn it and score at 5 inches from the bottom and then at the 10 inch mark as well. Non-directional papers will work best for this as by the time we have done the required folding some of the sections are going to be upside down. It will be best to fold the horizontal score lines first. The first one is going to mark the bottom of the envelope and the second is going to make the envelope flap. Take a pair of scissors and cut the bottom corners off at a 45 degree angle. Then open the envelope out and cut along the flap score lines up to the intersection where both lines meet. Fold the small flap section of the half an inch score line back onto themselves like this. Then cut from that corner bit up to look up at a 45 degree angle to make it look more like an envelope flap. Do this on both sides keeping it as symmetrical as possible. Open the envelope out and lay it flat. Now we're going to make the circle aperture. I'm using a three and a quarter inch circle die, but if you don't have a die cutting machine, then you could print a three and a quarter inch circle picture out and then use that as a template to draw around and cut using scissors. To stop the die from slipping out of place, I stuck it down into the onto the paper with some washi tape. I used my Gemini die cutting machine, which is motorised, so it requires very little effort. And it also takes projects that are up to A4 size. Make sure the cut inside of your die is facing towards the cutting plate and not towards the magnetic shim. A mistake I'm sure all die cutters have made at some time or another. Unfortunately, my washi tape was extra sticky and I had to be very careful not to rip the paper when I was removing it. The leftover circle can be used elsewhere in your junk journal as well, I'm sure, so I would hold on to that. When you've removed your die, you can fold up the envelope to make sure you're happy with the position of everything. Those half inch folds at the sides are going to be stuck to one another, which means that the full width of the envelope can be used, instead of gluing the front directly to the back and losing some of the width due to the glue. You can make any kind of ephemera to go inside the envelope. I decided to use some decorative decorative rather decorative card to make a journal card which would fill the whole envelope i wanted to have the decorative side of that card show through the window i made the card a square shape and rounded the corners so it would go in smoothly i then inked all of the edges of the envelope including around the aperture and i inked the journal card as well now it's time to cover the aperture I decided to use some vellum paper so that I would still be able to see through. You could use acetate packaging if you prefer, or maybe some netting or something like that would be cool. Of course you could just cover it with some opaque design paper if you weren't worried about being able to see through it. Cut a piece of whatever you are using to a size that will fully cover the circle hole, making sure the piece is small enough to fit within the fold lines of the envelope. This will stop any awkward bunching at the side edges. Apply some glue around the entire rim of the circle and then stick your material down. You will then be able to lift the corners and the edges to apply some glue to those too. You're aiming to have that piece on as, as securely as possible as you don't want it lifting when you slide your ephemera inside. For extra security I stuck some washi tape around the edges of the vellum and I probably should have used normal sticky tape as that would have been less likely to lift up, but this did the job anyway. I applied the tape to all four edges creating a seal over the vellum and down onto the paper. At this stage I took the envelope to the sewing machine and added a zigzag stitched border around all sections of the envelope and around the aperture as well. This added extra texture and detail as well as some more security holding the vellum down. Now you can assemble your envelope by gluing those folded side sections to one another. Weigh them down well while the glue dries to ensure the strongest seal. Once the envelope is dry you can add any extra decorations that you like. I kept it simple and made a closure using a thin strip of the same card I used to make the journal card. 
I measured it against the width of the flap and cut it down to size by eye. I was careful to only add glue to the sections which would be in direct contact with that back panel of the envelope, as I didn't want the flap to get caught in the glue. I pressed it down until it was firmly stuck. I then added a little pocket to the bottom of that panel using the same design card again, this time using a wider piece. I created a patch pocket by gluing it down on the three edges and I then needed something to pop inside it so I made a little square journal card in a contrasting colour. I think the front would look nice with a little something overlapping the edge of the aperture but I couldn't find the right thing to use so I just left it. But maybe some die cut flowers or some paper dolls would look like it would really add something, a pop of interest to the front. So thank you for watching today's tutorial and please subscribe if you like what you see. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye bye!